Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Happy to have you join me. It's a little bit rainy here in Kingston, so it's a good day to jump online and be in a, a little health promotion webinar. So I'd like to know, just as a little icebreaker, where are you joining us from? So Jeremiah, you're in Richmond. Nice to, nice to read. <laughs> I was going to say nice to see you. It's so hard sometimes. Sean's in Gagetown. Awesome. Wainwright. All over the place. Um, I would not only like to know where you're from, but also since today's webinar is really focusing on your power, um, how to use it, how to be efficient with your power. Um, what would your ideal superpower be if you could choose just one? So I'll start. My name is Rachel and I'm here in Kingston, as you can see on the slide. And if I could have any superpower, I think I would choose the ability to speak and understand any language. So I'm getting a bit of the travel bug being in quarantine for going on about six months, I guess now. And I think that would be a superpower that would definitely come in handy once things are back to normal and we can travel again. So where are you from and what superpower would you choose? Hey, Sharon, good to see you. Jeremiah wants to be able to fly. That's a good one too. Also very travel oriented, right? get places and, and be able to fly. No airport lineups, for sure. Don't have to stand in lines. Don't have to do the uh, COVID checks. Sharon's also on Team Fly. Love it. So would it be like a jetpack flying or would you want like wings like a bird? Sean's agree with flying. Hey, Krista. So we're just talking about where we're from and what superpower we would choose if we could pick, pick any superpower. I love all these ideas. So again, oh, reading minds. Jeremiah, so kind of like the Superman way, just up, up, and away, kind of like a jetpack. Cool. Love it. I think reading minds is a dangerous one. <laughs> you never know what you might get with that one. Amanda, oh, awesome. You're also in Kingston, and your superpower would be to calm, be calm in every situation. That is definitely a superpower, not something that humans generally have all the time. So good pick. Awesome. Well, it's good to meet everybody virtually and have a quick chat before we jump into the content. Again, today is all about your power, how you have it, and specifically how we can use that to be efficient with our energy in any situation. Um, so by the end, maybe you'll find that you do already have some form of a superpower. Before we get started today, do know that the presentation is a property of the Department of National Defense. So we ask that you don't reproduce or retransmit any of the slides. And some of the topics um, discussed today in the webinar are more of a sensitive nature. Um, it, the content is geared for adults, so 18 and over. And we ask if you do have any children around that you use your own parental discretion. Also know that People's stories, whether told on camera or in the chat, are their own. So we ask that we only discuss them in the context of this webinar and we leave them here and we don't discuss them um, outside of the webinar. This webinar is being recorded. So even though you can't record it yourself, it will be available later at calfconnection.ca. So you can review it um, if you want to revisit some content um, or if you would like to share it with any family members or coworkers, that's where you can find it and where you can find all of the webinars that Health Promotion has been doing since the beginning of quarantine and self-isolation. So lots of great information there that you can revisit. 
So the first question today is a quick poll that will show up on the right hand of your screen. And we're just wondering how you are affiliated with the CAF community. So are you a CAF member? Are you a family member, veteran, civilian staff, or other? So whatever best describes you. Awesome, so it looks like we have a pretty good split so far. A couple of CAF members, some family members, and civilian staff as well. So it's great to have a mix of the whole CAF community here with us today. So welcome. If you're not familiar with Health Promotion, Health Promotion does provide content in four different pillars to the Canadian Armed Forces. And today we're focusing on the social wellness pillar. So you can see that at the bottom left hand of your screen there. And specifically, we're working from the Stress Take Charge program. So if you've taken that program in the past, maybe in person, um, at your base or um, in any other context with health promotion, this will be a great refresher. And if you haven't taken it before and this content really resonates with you, maybe that's something you think about taking in the future and you put on your radar. So all of the content that health promotion provides is created with Strengthening the Forces, which is the Director of Force Health Protection. So the content is all standardized. No matter what base you're on, you're always getting the same content. It's just presented by a different facilitator. So you get a different flair on every base. It's always a good idea to refresh that information. Even if you've taken these courses a few years back, it's great to revisit them. Health promotion programs are available to CAF members, their families, veterans, and any civilian staff over the age of 18. So make sure you take advantage of that. The next question I have is if these health promotion webinars are your first experience with health promotion or not. So have you ever participated in those face-to-face uh, -face health promotion programs before? just have to get this in. It looks like it didn't save. So just a quick yes or no here. So far, everyone is a no, one yes. All right, very interesting. I always find this question intriguing because it seems like a lot of people have been introduced to health promotion content through these online webinars, which is amazing because people have more access to the programs at being online and potentially more time as well, because obviously our work schedules are a little bit different right now. So I really hope you're enjoying this content. And then you think about making um, these health promotion programs a priority once you return to work as well. And contact your own health promotion office and see what their um, return to work schedule is looking like and if they have any face-to-face -face health promotion programs coming up in the near future. So what to expect today? We're going to talk about how we spend our energy, and what it looks like to be more energy efficient. Um, using that in the context of, you know, there's a lot of talk around the environment right now, but that can really apply to how we use our own energy, um, our energy in our mind and our body, and how we can make that as efficient as possible. So we'll do that by using the personal power grid, and then we'll have a couple of scenarios where we can practice how to use that power grid and be ready to use it in our daily life once this webinar is complete. So today should only be about half an hour, be nice and quick, and you'll be ready and on your way with a new tool in your pocket. So let's get started. What does your personal power grid look like? Well, your personal power grid should be something that is reliable. It should be something that's renewable, that you can 
keep topped up and it should be efficient. So I like these comments because they kind of talk about how we're moving to renewable energy and how that can look when we're thinking about our, our own energy that we use. The one that I relate to the most is the guy over on the right there in the hammock. He's saying, oh, leave me alone. I'm solar powered. I'm recharging. I need my time here. But it's important that we don't only think about how we recharge, but also how we use that energy once we're recharged. So in mental fitness and suicide awareness, another health promotion program under social wellness, we talk a lot about mental fitness exercises, how to re recharge ourselves and boost our energy. Um, but here in Stress Take Charge, we want to think about how we can make that energy last as well and how we can use it really smartly. So our personal power grid looks like this. There's four quadrants and there's two questions to ask ourselves. So the first question is to identify what we have control over and what we don't have control over. After that, we can recognize if we're taking action on those things or not. So if we look at the first column here, if we do have control over something in a scenario that we have in our life, if we're taking action on that, we're demonstrating mastery. So we're enacting our own energy on something that's actually going to come to fruition. It's going to elicit some sort of change. And that can be really confidence boosting when we can see things actually work when we put our energy into it. Now, if we recognize we have control over something, but instead of taking action, we don't take action, this can put us in more of the feeling of giving up. So that quadrant under mastery. And that might be because we've used our energy on something else in our life, um, because of past experiences. There's a lot of valid reasons why we might be in that quadrant, but it's not the most efficient use of our energy because we could be enacting change, um, but instead we can't at this point. So throughout the webinar, we're going to talk about how we can move from this place of giving up into mastery where we're the most energy efficient. The second column, we have no control. So the things we recognize that we don't have control over, but we still decide to take action, we're more in this striving quadrant. So we're trying to reach something that pretty much is not possible. So this could be like trying to change other people's views, um, maybe trying to enact change on things above our, um, maybe our power level at work, so out of our control that way, but we're still spending a lot of our energy trying to change it, knowing that it's, it's not possible. Whereas if we recognize we don't have control and we're able to take a step back and not take action, we get into this period, this state of letting go or acceptance. So this is then saving up our energy so that we can use it when we get the opportunity to master a situation instead. So our two most energy efficient quadrants is mastery and acceptance. So they're highlighted here in the green. They're both very proactive choices, um, but they do require some specific skills. So for mastery, it does require confidence, motivation, a lot of communication, and potentially a really good circle of people to ask advice for and to um, have as a resource to get um, their opinions and their support. For acceptance and being able to let go, it requires a lot of perspective and being able to recognize that there are things we can't control. So that situational awareness is really key here. And it could take a lot of patience as well, because again, it doesn't happen overnight. This could take a period of time to come to this realization. Whereas those quadrants of giving up and striving are passive and reactive. So this can cause feelings of a lot of frustration and exhaustion, um, even feelings of helplessness and defeat. And so that's somewhere that not only depletes our energy, but it also steals it because we're using it in places where they're not that effective. 
So for reference, I'm just going to send out a handout here that goes over what we just talked about. And it's a worksheet that you can use in the future. And you can also have up as we go through the next scenarios in order to recognize and even just write out as a visual in that list form what we do have control over and what we don't have control over. And then you can ask yourself, how can I take action to move towards mastery? And how can I or what can I let go of to move towards acceptance as well? So hopefully that's helpful as we go through these case studies and after the webinar when you put this into practice into your daily life. So we're gonna call this the optimal zone. We're kind of on trend of renewable energy, energy efficiency. So we're gonna call this optimal zone your ozone. We're maintaining the ozone layer of ourselves, okay? So what are some thoughts from people in the chat of how if you're feeling like you're in this period of giving up, you feel helpless, you um, just don't have the energy to take action even though you know you have control, what are some ways you can boost yourself up to that mastery level? Any ideas in the chat? Break down large goals into small tasks. Great suggestion, Marianne. It takes some of those big problems um, and makes them more bite-sized, right? So you can start taking smaller actions over time to build up that confidence you need and uh, see that change take place eventually. Great idea. Yeah, so uh, a lot of reframing, right? Trying to rethink things. Jeremiah says, find a supportive buddy. Sometimes we just need someone else to help us build up that energy again too, right? Um, someone to give us another perspective. Researching information, for sure. So taking a step back and maybe planning out our action a little bit more. Yeah, great. So Amanda taking from that acceptance quadrant and realizing it's not going to happen overnight. It's not a magic wand. Um, and we're allowed to take that time to get to the mastery position. And, and there's no, no rush as long as we realize where we are and where we want to be. Great ideas. So let's try the next one. How do we get to our ozone layer of when we don't have control. So get from striving to letting go. So we're trying to take action on something, but we know we don't have control. How do we practice letting go? Any ideas, you can share them in the chat. For me, something I do to recognize um, when I don't have control or how to let go. It's just a reminder of, um, you know, I can control myself, right? So going through that list of I can't control other people, um, perspectives are always differently. So it's a little bit more of a, a meditative reflection when I need to remind myself to let go of something. Um, and it's also reminding ourselves of our priorities as well. So reframing again comes in key here and it's also having that priority of your energy and recognizing that I can spend this better in another way. So it's time to let this go and focus on something else. That could be an option. So we're always potentially going to be in one of those less than ideal quadrants that's 100% normal. Most of us start there anyways, because that's a very, very normal human default. Um, but the goal at the end of today's webinar is to know how we can move into these places of mastery and acceptance. So we're going to give it a try. So you can have that handout up if that's helpful. So you can see the personal power grid right on your screen. You can have some of those prompt questions ready to go. The first one we're going to go through um, will be a bit of just an example run so we all know what we're doing uh, for the following three scenarios as well. So the first one, we're calling this the budget breakdown. So due to budget cuts at your department, you will not be receiving any additional personnel this year. 
You try to convince your leadership that the position is needed and you keep working on this even though the budget is finalized and it's not within your department. So how these scenarios are going to go, I'll read out that case study every time. And then what I'd like you to do in the chat is to send in whatever emoji you think um, this person's quadrant is at the moment. So there's a little happy face button at the bottom of the chat. If you think it's mastery, you send in a little thumbs up. I don't think there's a little teardrop. They need to update their um, <laughs> their emoji board. But if you think they're in the giving up quadrant, you can just use your characters like that. And if you think they're striving, just remove the teardrop and just a regular sad face. And then if you think they're in the letting go stage, you send in a little clap. Does that make sense? Okay, so we think they are currently striving. What else? Striving as well, Jeremiah says. Any other thoughts? Are we all in agreement? Yeah, so, yep, yeah, Sean's on it too. So what's really key here is no control. So that immediately puts us on the right side of the personal power grid. We know that there's no control because we've identified that um, with the budget is already being finalized. So because they're still trying to take action, they're striving for something that's going to just suck out their energy and not provide any benefits. So how can we help this individual get from striving to letting go? What are some things that they could remind themselves of in this situation? I'll give you some time to write that down in the chat. How can they move from striving to letting go? Reminding ourselves that we're still in that category of no control. Yep, so reminding ourselves of that reality, the budget has been finalized adjusting expectations for their work output. So that is now um, not only an internal action that they can take, but this is now something that's in their control, right? So you're adding something to this scenario where you could maybe take action and maybe now it's time to um, discuss those expectations with your supervisor as well. So just by moving to letting go that the budget has been finalized, we're already finding that pathway to mastery and letting go at the same time. Really good examples. So the next one is called the document defeat. So last week you were told that a few of your documents for a training were not received yet. You can't believe you forgot to send these in. You feel defeated, embarrassed, and you lose all motivation to try again. So using those emojis, which quadrant do you think this person is in right now? First, think about if they have control or no control. And then think about if they're taking action or not taking action. Jeremiah says giving up. Nice. Anyone think it's somewhere else in the quadrants? You guys are right on the money, right? So definitely in that feeling of giving up. Um, yeah, right on, Sean. So the key here is that they still do have control. They have control over sending in the documents or not. And the ball is kind of in their court at this point. Nowhere in this scenario are we saying like, you've missed a deadline, you can no longer hand them in, right? It's just that, hey, we're waiting on this. Can you send them in? So how can we help this person or what can some of that reframing or thought change look like to move from giving up to mastery, their optimal zone of energy use. 
recognizing that they're currently feeling embarrassed, defeated, you know, maybe this has been the straw that's broke the camel's back and they're like, oh, I dropped another ball. You know, I forgot something else. Um, how can we change that motivation and confidence level to give us enough energy to face the fact and to um, go hand in those those documents? Check negative self-talk. Awesome. So negative self-talk is a great topic to to get into it's very normal because our brain is always looking to protect ourselves or defend us from dangers right and those dangers nowadays can be embarrassment it can be um, that feeling of defeat so usually we kind of want to hide away from that and we don't want to face people when we feel that way but recognizing you know it's just a mistake right so we're kind of letting go of those things i can't control that i've already forgotten the documents so the thing i can control is to now hand them in right so we're moving on both sides to more mastery and at the same time we're doing that by letting certain things go like negative self-talk great job the next one is the traffic terror. So driving through a green light, a car speeds up on your right and quickly cuts in front of you as their lane ends. You think, how could they be so ignorant? You're mad and you try to meet them up at the next lights and tell them what they did. Where do you think this person is right now? Are they in control or not in control of the situation that happened in traffic? And are they trying to take action or are they not taking action? So with that information, using those emojis, what quadrant do you think this person is in? Nice. Yeah, so they're striving to change somebody else and their actions that have already taken place, which we know we don't have control over, especially the actions of a stranger and especially the actions of someone else in another car where you know communication especially constructive communication is extremely difficult if not impossible so how can we get this person to um, to be letting go in that little clap zone what are some things that you can do in the car, in this scenario, someone cuts you off. How do you go from that feeling of rage and I'm going to tell them what they did wrong and move to letting go and acceptance? Work on not driving like them. Yeah, lead by example, right? Why not? Like, well, I'm going to obey every single rule now. <laughs> Sean, take a breather. Yeah. So if you've ever taken mental fitness suicide awareness with health promotion, there's something called tactical breathing. And uh, there's the, we have little decals that uh, we hand out in, in Kingston. And so you can put that decal everywhere. And a lot of people like to put it in their car for that reason. Uh, it's very stressful to feel like you can't take action, right? You're in your little car and you feel helpless sometimes. So to let go easier by taking a deep breath, doing some tactical breathing, that can really reduce your heart rate, your reactivity level, and your breathing. So if you don't know what tactical breathing is, it's a simple inhale for a count of four, you hold that for a count of four, you exhale for a count of four, and you hold that for a count of four. And then you repeat that for about four minutes. So it's not a meditation where you close your eyes, <laughs> that would be very dangerous in a car, but it's something you can easily do anywhere you are to reset the state of mind that you're in, and it's perfect for this scenario and really perfect to let go of some of that stress and that agitation in a situation like this. So the last example we have is the dishwashing duel. So you feel like you don't get much help around the home. 
Sometimes you feel like the house fairy that cleans up without anyone ever noticing. You don't even want to talk about it because you'll probably just be ignored again. So this one, we're going to do a little bit more in depth. So I'd like you to put in the chat, what are some things that this person has control over? What do you think? So this is similar to how that handout works too, right? It, it prompts you to identify some of those things that you do have control over in the situation. Reaction, communication, for sure. And then next, what are some things that this person does not have control over? And it's important we recognize both because situations are always complicated and there's always a mixture of things that we can and can't control. Yeah, Sean, so the communication of our feelings. Okay, so we don't have control over the thoughts of others in the home, right? Or others in general. Great. So with that, the things we do have control over, our communication and our reaction, we can take action on. So this helps us to master that situation. Now that could be having a family meeting and being able to approach that in a way that doesn't attack others because we know we can't control that, but it is a way that we can efficiently express how we're feeling and collaborate in a way that could create change and allow people to also maybe express things that you weren't aware of and have something productive happen. So that's a, a helpful way to process the different components of a frustrating and annoying situation to make sure that if we are trying to take action, we have our priorities straight. So we know the things we can't control, so we're not going to go in and, and mix that in with how we're taking action either. We're able to let that go before we take action. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it is always a tough situation to be in when um, you're feeling frustrated or you feel like um, you know, you're not being heard. But this strategy of being able to prioritize where we spend our energy is going to be really helpful in keeping us um, focused, keeping us feeling like we have enough energy for our day and prevent us from burnout or exhaustion um, and, and and keep a positive, a positive feeling in our lives, right? moving forward in a positive way. So again, doing this helps us move into that optimal energy zone. So I want you to remember that. I want you to think of yourself as having this ozone layer and you're trying to protect it. So you're protecting it by using mastery and using letting go and acceptance to your advantage. So think back now to that question I asked at the beginning of the webinar. Is there a time in your life when you recall that you have used mastery or acceptance really well? And if you can think of that time, first of all, give yourself kudos because we know that takes a lot of work um, and it takes a lot of effort to do that. If you'd like to share what that was, you can share that in the chat. It's great to learn from each other and each other's experiences. Um, if you don't feel comfortable sharing that the scenario, that's fine too. Maybe you just share something that you learned from that scenario or something that you would do again to remind yourself how to move towards these um, energy efficient quadrants. And as you think about those times, we can also open up the floor to any other questions as well. Questions or clarifications on the personal power grid. For me, I think uh, a time of, of acceptance um, was oh, back in university. I was initially part of a sports administration program. So it was a great program, um, but I didn't realize how 
like professional sports focused it was. So it wasn't exactly what I was expecting, um, but I still loved it. Um, there was a huge component of business within the programs. So there's lots of accounting, lots of finance, um, lots of things that I hadn't, I wasn't naturally drawn to or naturally great at. So come second year of this program, I'm trying my best. It's, it's pretty competitive. And I'm in my second year finance course and I ended up failing the course. So for me, that was really difficult. And I was thinking to myself, oh, how do I, you know, I, I got to talk to the professor. I got to do this. I got to do that. Um, you know, thinking about, oh, what's this going to mean for next year? And um, then being able to talk to my mom and, and tell her openly, like, I just failed a course. What am I going to do? My life is over. And she's like, it's not a big deal. You know, I failed lots of courses in university. Um, you know, sometimes life and school doesn't line up and, and it doesn't work out that way. You have some options, right? So you've already failed it. It's in the past and we need to let go of that. But how can you move forward? So I was then able to kind of refocus and be like, well, I think I failed because I didn't enjoy finance and I didn't want to put the effort in to redoing the course next year. And I didn't feel that motivation there. So that spurred me to instead take action and finally switch courses into or switch majors into health promotion, something that I was watching friends go through and I was really jealous of their schooling. I was like, that's what I want to do. Um, and so that was a moment where I could not only let go of that feeling of failure, but also move forward into mastery and really feel like I was making a positive change and something that was meaningful in my life as well. So hopefully that example also helps you um, think about those times and maybe you have done something similar so you can give yourself props for that and recognize those great things you did and how you can continue and do that in the future. Marianne says, when rest is necessary, it becomes productive. For sure. Yeah. So taking that time to rest and rethink is very, very productive. Prioritizing that is, is a great idea. So the last poll I have for everybody today, it should be showing up there. I'll try again. Is if you feel that you can apply the things we talked about today in your daily living or not. So it goes from strongly disagree at the top to strongly agree. Feedback is always helpful. I hope the short and sweet nature of this webinar was useful for you and that this is something that you can put into practice today, tomorrow, into the weeks ahead, and maybe something you revisit uh, as the recorded webinar or with your handout as well. So thank you for joining me today. Um, there are some resources here on this slide that you can continue to access as a part of the CAFS response to COVID and recognizing everyone is in a different place right now. So we have CIFMAP, Canada Suicide Hotline, updated reliable information on COVID-19, the Family Information Line, the Sexual Misconduct Response Center, Kids Help Phone, and CMP Administrative Response Center. So take a screenshot of this. Um, make sure those resources are handy, even if you don't need them now. You, a friend or a family member, might need them in the future. Um, so we'll see you in the next webinar. Thanks so much for being here with me today. And enjoy the rest of your day. I'll hang out for a little bit as people leave the room. So if there's any extra questions you'd like to ask, go ahead uh, and I'll be here for an extra minute or two. You're welcome everyone. See you Sharon. Bye Jeremiah. Bye Sean. Thanks Marianne.